Hello and welcome to the March 2023 Sky Report. I'm Patrick So. Shifting our attention towards the evening sky, we observe Venus gradually nearing Jupiter since late February. This picture was taken February 22nd, shows a crescent moon next to Jupiter, while Venus is positioned below. Venus and Jupiter will be in a very close conjunction on March 1st. The two brightest planets visible in the night sky will appear separated by the diameter of a full moon. This will be an exceptional sight, as both planets will be located next to each other above the western horizon during dusk. A telescope with a wide field of view could potentially capture both planets in its field of view. Weather permitting, the event will be broadcasted by Griffith Observatory. The link to the webpage is shown here. Or you can watch the event live on our YouTube page by using the link shown. If you miss the event, we will post it on this site for future viewing. After the close conjunction of Venus and Jupiter, if you observe the sky each evening about an hour after sunset, you will notice Venus gradually moving away from Jupiter at a rate of one full moon diameter per day. On March 2nd, Venus will be located about one degree away from Jupiter. By March 5th, both planets appear four degrees apart from each other. The evenings will get a little brighter. On March 12th, daylight saving time will begin. Please remember to advance your clocks by one hour in California. The time change adds an hour of daylight in the evening as the sun sets an hour later compared to the previous day. Around the middle of the month, you can still spot Venus and Jupiter in the west. Jupiter sets around 8.30 p.m., followed by Venus around 9.40 p.m. During this time, the red planet Mars is high in the south in Taurus the Bull. This map shows Mars's location at the start and end of each week of the month, alongside the constellation boundaries shown by the brown lines. Throughout the month, Mars continues to move eastward through Taurus before moving into Gemini the Twins on the 25th. The winter constellations Orion, Gemini, Taurus the Bull and Canis Major still dominate the southern sky at night. This is a great opportunity to learn the constellations before they begin to move over towards the west. Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky, can be found easily by drawing a line down from Orion's belt. The second brightest star in the night sky, Canopus, is just visible from Southern California and from latitudes south of 37 degrees north. The best time to see Canopus mid-month is around 7.45 p.m. You can find it by drawing a straight line downwards from Sirius to the south horizon. Here is a picture I took showing Canopus as seen from Griffith Observatory on February 6 at 10 p.m. By 10 p.m. mid-month, the winter constellations Orion, Taurus, Canis Major and Gemini shift towards the southwest, while Leo the Lion ascends to the south to herald the arrival of spring. Spring arrives when the vernal equinox occurs on March 20th at 2.24 p.m. PDT. At the time of the equinox, the sun is located exactly on the intersection of the celestial equator, the Earth's equator projected into the sky, and the zero right ascension line or longitude in the sky. At local noon in Los Angeles, the sun will be approximately 56 degrees above due south horizon. The vernal equinox marks the beginning of spring in the northern hemisphere and the start of autumn in the southern hemisphere. On the 23rd, 45 minutes after sunset, look for the thin crescent moon located just below Venus. Jupiter will be low towards the southwest. For those of you who have missed Saturn, the ring planet was lost in the sun's glare for over two months. It is now visible low above the east-southeast horizon, less than an hour before sunrise at the end of the month. Our moon phases this month. Full moon is the 7th, last quarter is on the 14th, new moon is the 21st, and first quarter is on the 28th. And that's all for this month's Sky Report. Until next time, cheerio!